Absolutely. We know Sampras has had the most extraordinary resilience throughout this Time. last week, but maybe, maybe the final has been one match too far, or perhaps it was one point too far. Because if he'd have won that fourth set, who knows? That third set, I should say. Andre Agassi serving to join the likes of Connors and Tanner and Gerolitis and Creek winning the Australian Open at the first attempt. 15 long. Looks to me as if Sampras has very little left to give. <laughs> but maybe destiny could yet come to his rescue. Two championship points for Andre Agassi. Yes, it came a little late and therefore was perhaps a little cruel. Thank you. Game. He's done it. A tenth race. His brother, Phil Agassi, on the right of Brad Gilbert. But sounds and sights that needed no words through. Well, it's a phenomenal achievement, isn't it? And you can see that he's uh, sharing at Agassi. He realizes just how much uh, Gilbert and uh, others in his party have meant to him. And let's remember that it's one leg towards a possible Grand Slam. I wonder if that's now his goal for the year. You've got to win the Australian to achieve the Grand Slam. Sampras can't, because it's four in the one calendar year. Peter Bellinger congratulating Andre Agassi. We look back at that third set tiebreak and know that that was the decisive time, but it was a magnificent third set for sustained quality it matched Sampras against Korea, but maybe in the end it was just one match too many for Sampras and he didn't quite have the stamina to fight back one more time in the fourth set. We'll take a break and be back for the presentation ceremony. <laughs> yes, that sums it up, doesn't it? Who has given his all in defence of his title and at the end still retains a sense of humor but I think now has a much 
greater place in the hearts of tennis fans and sports fans around the world for what he has done throughout this fortnight and the way he's behaved. Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Andre for a great two weeks. He was just too good for everyone. Uh, he deserves all the success he's gotten, and uh, so congratulations, mate. <laughs> Um, also, uh, to my coach, to, uh, he's back home, uh, I just want to let him know that I'm, I'm thinking about him. <laughs> and that I, I wish he was here. And um, I've been praying for him uh, the last couple weeks, and uh, but anyway, um, I like to thank all the fans for coming out and supporting me the last couple weeks and the event. Also, my uh, my support crew, my girlfriend Delana and Paul Anico and Fer. And the main sponsor, Ford, uh, for letting me have their car. I've gotten into back t about 10 accidents since then. You, you know, you guys, you guys drive on the wrong side of the road there. But anyway, it was a great two weeks, and uh, I look forward to coming back next year. And um, thanks a lot. Superb, right to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Ford Australian Open Championship this year has, without a doubt, added a new dimension to the tournament. It doesn't matter whether you call him the Black Prince, the Pirate King, or just Andre the Giant Killer. Thank you. Jeff Pollard, the president of Tennis Australia, handing over the Norman Brooks Challenge Cup and a prize money check for four hundred and eighty thousand dollars for Andre Agassi. Oh, uh, wow! Thank you. Uh, I, I tell you what, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, great champions come and go, and I have to say what I witnessed Pete do over the last two weeks with the difficulties uh, surrounding his coach, who, Tim, are, you've been in all our prayers as well. Um, what he's showing on the court as well as off the court is, is absolutely inspiring, I think, can... Uh, can teach us all. We can all learn something from what Pete's managed to do, and he's a class act. And I think he's shown these over these past couple of weeks why he is number one in the world. Uh, I next like to uh, thank my coach Brad Gilbert, sitting over there, who has He's, he's helped me accomplish all my dreams, and standing next to him is a guy that I love with everything, every ounce of, of, of anything that I have inside of me. He's my trainer and best friend, and he just has been through for me through good times and bad times, and I'm glad you could be here to share this with me, Gil. Gil Rice. Uh, 
don't know what else to say. It's the first time I've ever come to a Grand Slam and actually believed that I had a shot. And I don't know if I could have got through it if it wasn't for all the support and the, the warm embrace that I got when I first came here. And I'm so excited to come back next year. Thank you all so much. Andre Agassi, ladies and gentlemen, the winner now of three Grand Slam championship titles, 1992 Wimbledon, 1994 the United States Open, and now 1995 the Ford Australian Open Championship. So through time for a closing thought or two? Yes, I think the tiebreakers, Sampras hasn't won one. I think they really should be called heartbreakers because I think if he'd won that third set tiebreaker, he might well have won the match. Who knows? Agassi says this is just another step. He doesn't believe he's number one, having beaten the world's number one. He says it's just a step in a long process, and it's going to take him perhaps another six months, perhaps the Grand Slam, before he can really prove that he is the number one. An interesting fact, and they really do, don't they, shower you with statistics, is that ever since uh, Chris Everton and Jimmy Connors won Wimbledon in 1974, double-handers they were, there have been 164 Grand Slams, and this is the 68th won by somebody like Agassi who plays two hands on one side. It's a recent phenomenon. Prior to them, there were only a few, McGrath and Bromwich who won the Australian. But Everett and, and uh, Connors showed people the way. Monica Sellers has done it two hands on both sides. But here, one of the best of them all. A wonderful two-handed backhand ally to the rest of his game. And of course, Mary Pierce, two-handed backhand, has won the women's title. We have two new champions. It's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure for Fru McMillan, myself, David Mercer, and Simon Reid to be your commentary team throughout the last fortnight. We've had some fantastic matches, haven't we, as Agassi joins the list of winners, particularly in the second week. So many of them involving Sampras. It's a shame that he can't leave as the champion, but we have two very popular new champions. The one overall thought I have is that last year so many journalists were saying that tennis was dying.